oh yeah, a hard left turn where you're just like, what? <laughs> Out of nowhere. Thanks. And it's just fun. It's really fun. We cover all the pop culture news here on Earth, all the way out to the Gamma Quadrant. This is Rob from Keeping Up with the Cardassians, and you're listening to Talk Talk Punch. It's the top three genre shifting movies for our April Fool's Day episode. Welcome to another episode of Talk Talk mm-hmm. Punch. Thank you so much to both our audio podcast and our YouTube viewers. Love you. Appreciate you. So glad that you're joining us. I am Brody, joined by Tudong Dylan. Hey. And the Scully of these X Files. Probably Hicks. Yeah. You guys watch X Files? No. We, we, we never talk X Files on here. We should. We should talk some X Files sometime. Brody, have you ever and seen? And I watch the movies. I watch some of the show. And I will. And I watch the movies. Right. Right. All right. I'm gonna go. If you like what you hear and you want to hear more of us, we do have a Patreon where you can get exclusive content about topics that you won't see on our main channel. You can find more information about that in the description below. And if you haven't already, we'd love it if you subscribed and hit that notification bell so you can come back here every Wednesday to hang out with us and have some fun. Because it's April Fool's Day. Well, not technically day, but week. April Fool's Day. This doesn't come out on April Fool's Day. But it's coming out in the week of April. Yeah, so April thought, Fools. April Fools. It's not April Fools. They fooled us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> got us again. Got us again. Yeah. <laughs> so we we wanted to do something that was in the vein of April Fools. So we said, oh boy, this was a tough one. We said, what if we did a top three of movies that just took a hard turn, right? Genre shifting started one way, took a hard left turn at some point, and turned into something. Totally different. And so we're doing that. Dylan, you look confused, and I'm concerned. No, I'm not confused. <laughs> okay. I am in no it, way confused. Am I not explaining that right? I was waiting for you to go British again. You explained right, right. it perfectly, bro. I loved it. Hard left okay. turn. Hard left turns. Yeah. Which is different from twists, right? We've done our top three twists. This isn't a top sure. three twist twist episode this is about the movies that start one way and then kind of introduce a whole nother genre so we'll see i thought this was really hard to do yeah i i, I there's I my, my number two may not go as well into what you had said as you would like but my third my third and first definitely do okay. and they just might shock you so Ooh. stay tuned Wait. 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 All right, well, let's go ahead and move right on to this. Ooh. So the order Damn. today is going to be me, Charlie, and Dylan. So bottom to top. All right. Go it up. There you are. Hey, Dylan. Okay. Hey. <laughs> All right, so my number three is... I don't remember. Slide. That's right. Cabin in the Woods. <laughs> Okay, so this nope. starts as a uh-huh. generic horror, right? And then at some point, it kind of takes a turn into like this satirical sort of comedy ish horror movie where it's not like a like a generic slasher, right? It starts as a slasher, not a slasher. You go in thinking you're gonna get like a, like a more generic slasher, and that's not what you're walking out getting. Yeah, that's true. Is it really genre twisting? Because it certainly still is horror. But it's different kinds of horror. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe, what, maybe what? Maybe what? Maybe maybe instead of saying genre twist, because how I, oh. I interpret this was like tone shift, oh, like a very okay. dramatic tone shift. So it could it, it could still kind of be in the same subgenre or large or larger. Ah, genre, right, well, that. in that case, then, my like, number two fits. A hard turn, a hard turn in tone. Yeah. Where, okay. Yeah. You know. Then I will have to change. the I mean, you don't have to. I'm just, uh, just, just throwing that. I'm, just, I'm defending you here, bro. And mm. since it's April Fools, that totally works. You don't change anything, bro. <laughs> don't change anything. They come in thinking it's genre shifting, what a twist. which I think it still sort of fits, but maybe tone shifts. It's a the different hardest, genre. Of the horror. hardest tone shifts. Yeah, 
well, this went from generic slasher horror to psychological comedy-ish horror? Would you say that it's kind of comedy-ish? Yeah, and then it went a more apocalyptic moment moment. horror. Yeah. Yeah, they were like, they had to like it appease, kind of, appease it gets, the It gets a lot of different though. horror in there. Uh, there it was a good movie. Yeah, excellent movie. movie. Excellent movie. So, uh, Don't change see. anything, it's perfect. Beautiful, okay. bro. I love All right. it. There's my number three, Cabin in the Woods. Oh boy, not feeling confident about the rest of my list now. So right, my number three, my number three, I cheated. Uh, I'm going to talk Already? largely... <laughs> Oh, Look, follow the assignment about the tone. I just picked three movies instead of just one uh, because they're a trilogy of films and it's hard to separate them in my mind uh, for this list. So uh, I put the Blood and Ice Cream trilogy here for number oh, my number three. Yeah. Uh, so we've got the Shaun of the Dead. Uh, we got Hot Fuzz and At World's End. But so look, Shaun of the Dead. I the, was the first of these obviously that came out and the first one that I saw and oh, you're watching this and you're just thinking what a great buddy comedy it's hilarious and and at just at some point that tone takes a hard turn and you're like holy crap I'm in like a legit dramatic zombie film and you're watching Hot Fuzz and you've you've seen Shaun of the Dead so you know there's going to be some kind of genre bend and twist and but it's even knowing that hard to see coming what came in that uh, that watching of Hot Fuzz I'm trying to not be overly spoilerly spoilery great. here and then the one that I was the least surprised by, but that was the biggest genre twist was wow. certainly World's End. Because at this point, you're like, I know what's coming. Something's going to be like real. And so as it starts to unfold, you're like, ah, aha, I'm not even that surprised by it anymore, even though it is dramatically surprising and wildly shifty. So I know, like, I'm, I'm trying to describe these without a lot of detail, which is always the best way to describe anything. Yeah. Uh, leave all the details out. They are indeed three movies. They are all well done. You can pick your favorite of the three to highlight mm. as the most dramatic shift for you, but it might depend a little bit on when and where you watched it. And I will say uh, that my list is maybe a little bit more about my personal experiences watching the movie than it is like trying to come up with some like list of the like the greatest well done executed tone shifts of all time. But sure. I think you, you can't go wrong with any of these three. Absolutely. I will say one of these show up. Oh, all right. Oh, nice. Little, little peek. This is, so this is a very good pick, Charlie. Very oh, good thanks, picture. Sir. Very good pick. All three of them. All right, Tudong. What's your number three? My number three is, is known for its tr twist, and that is I completely cheated. I knew, I said to myself, I'm not going to put anything on here that people are, don't know for sure that there is a twist, but from dusk till dawn has got a... Big twist, big twist. It sits there and it goes from a like it's hard boiled like I'm trying to get over the border, escape the cops, and next thing you know, you get there and a huge hard turn. This came out in like '96, so it's not spoiling anything for anybody. They go to the wrong cantina, they go to the wrong bar, and all hell breaks loose. I'm not going to tell you how it ha happens because probably you already know because it is known for its twist, but it is a fun movie to watch. That first part of it is tense when they're going across the border, all of that stuff. Absolutely epic, absolute tense. Huge genre, genre twist into horror. God, like not, not even like, like compared to the, uh, the crime kind of thriller that it was before that big time horror, like with vampires and death and ridiculous B movie, like violence and weapons and all that kind of stuff. Super twist. I had to include it. I didn't put this on my list because I knew it would show up on one of yours. Oh yeah. Maybe both. We'll see. Ooh. All right, little tease there. All right, well, we will move nice. on. I think this is a great pick, though. Thank you. Thank this you. This is like this is like the the iconic like sh genre shift, right? Oh yeah, a hard left turn where you're just like what? <laughs> out of nowhere, Thanks. and it's just fun. It's really fun. Okay, my number two is Hot Fuzz. Hey, I was nice. I was really back and forth on specifically Hot Fuzz and World's End. Um, or I originally mm. had the World's End on there because 
the genre twist of like friends kind of growing up and healing after some hurt into like something totally different i didn't <laughs> see coming <laughs> i was like oh, what <laughs> um but this one just like did the shift so well to go mm. from like action comedy buddy cop like big city cop in a little town then into full like mystery thriller action like, mm. and you you wind up in like a full-blown action so this one just did it i think oscar wright does these tonal shifts um, yeah so charlie i think you kind of nailed it by just putting all three on there i i should have thought <laughs> of that that was a good idea no, I, I look i cheated you didn't cheat uh and you picked a, you picked a great one it's a better movie than uh than world's end yeah just yeah. all all around uh, also, Ed, Ed, Edgar Wright. Mm -hmm. What did I say? You went, Brit you, you, went, you went British and called him Oscar. Oh. You went British and called him Oscar? <laughs> is that what he's called in England, bro? Because I thought he was called Edgar in England as well. Because he is British! I think he is English, yeah. Uh, Edgar Wright. Uh, so yeah, Oscar. so so there's there's my number two is That's hot great, fuzz, great, 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 great. hard action. All right, Charlie, your number two. <sighs> All right, look, my number two is really, I I look. This was was I think this probably was on my list when we did movies we saw too young, and this movie Ooh. was definitely a movie that I saw at way too young of an age. It is done by one of the great director masters of all time. It is really like two different movies and just like you watch the first you watch the first half and you're like wow that was this movie and then you watch the second half and you're like holy crap that's a totally different movie so even though the genre doesn't really like change because it's all about war uh the presentation of it and like the execution of it the tone of it is so, so dramatically different between the two halves uh you can go no, ahead and put my slide about. up here so um we're going full metal jacket here for the for the oh. film and it is this was like such a jarring uh, shift. And, and it was just, it was, first of all, just a fantastically well acted and well made movie. Um, this, the 80s were really like a, a, like the, I don't know, just like the, the delight of, of like a lot of Vietnam War movies. So it was like, uh, there was like a big wave of directors like coming in and really telling stories that like, you know, dramatic stories. So, you know, every now and then you get like a good morning Vietnam and try to spin into like a feel good story. Um, but doesn't hold up as well as uh, some of the other ones um you know at a time where we didn't have like internet and and we didn't have ability to learn about these things in, in an effective way and so you see a lot of filmmakers take it upon themselves to tell some of the more darker sides of war and some of like the the horrors of it and you get to see like the horror of war presented in two different ways and the lighthearted yeah. training and, and then like that hard cut on a on a very dark tone uh, at, at at the end of that kind of like training with the yeah. and then uh and then into the the sniper scene that was like so intense that sniper uh scene uh was just i i, I, I was at the edge of my tiny little bottom on a tiny little seat watching that thing um so uh if you are gonna watch one of the 80s vietnam movies this is not a bad one to uh to pick and you can kind of see what i'm talking about with the split yep i i considered this one which is how i knew where you were going talking okay. like It's my turn. Aye. My number two, which I thought was not counting, apparently it does count because although it is, and you, you go ahead and put it up road, my number two is Memento because it does a hard twist. The whole time you think he's, all right, obviously there's going to be spoilers here, like spoilers here for this. You think he's looking for his wife's killer, and at the very end we find out he already found his wife's killer. He's not even searching for it. He already took his vengeance, or maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. We're not exactly sure either way. I always took it like he already did it. There's a picture of him like pointing to where he's going to put the tattoo, but he doesn't do it. He keeps himself in the dark, and it turns out he's lying to himself to keep searching for his wife's killer. He literally, we find out at the beginning or the end of the movie, that he has lied and he has made it so he is going to take it out on this one guy who, it, 
basically is helping him. And, and he just could, does a complete 180 on that. I, when I saw this, I was just like, what? This isn't even a revenge tale anymore? And it's a different kind of revenge now? So I thought to myself, Memento is my number two because I, each time I watch this movie, I'm always not, it's not that I'm surprised. Like the first time I watched it, I was just blown away. And every single time after that, I'm blown away by it. I mean, I think it's a fantastically made movie. And each time at the very end, I'm like, oh, jeez, like you're not even looking for this. You've already finished this, or maybe you did it yourself. We don't even know if he's the one who just accidentally killed his wife or if his wife was killed in some, by some person. Or maybe she didn't die because of that. We don't know. There's a thousand different stories out there, but severe hard turn because I was rooting for him, and I was just like, find your wife's killer, and now you've got it. And then it turns out that he is manipulating events himself even so it's not only is he a completely unreliable narrator but he has lied to himself and and all of the rest of us and you know people who are from england or from here broad don't appreciate it or they really do appreciate it because what a twist i don't know what Charlie? oh i i said either side of the pond i think is oh. how, how we say that Oh. How we say that here in the, how we say that here in the states? <laughs> I don't know how you say it in your fancy tongue over there in your British accents, but we say across the pond here. I don't have a British accent. Dylan, have you watched Christopher Nolan's explanation of this timeline? Uh, yeah, the uh, black and white is actually moving forward, and the stuff in color is moving backwards and then it kind of meets in the, not have, in the center have you, but towards the end. have you watched him like draw it on like a whiteboard i think i have that sounds there's very a video familiar. on youtube of him uh -huh. explaining and he has a whole like u-shaped like horseshoe shaped timeline and he breaks it all down it's one of those things yeah. where you watch and you're like Oh, did you come up with this? Like, yeah. this is confusing, even the way you're explaining it. I don't know how you came up with it. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not a movie to be watched, honest, like, while you're distracted with a cell phone or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You know, every now and then look up and be like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. Uh, no, you've got to pay, pay attention. attention. <laughs> All right. Moving number on. Number one, Brodo. To the number one. Now, Number one, the, the tonal shift. Maybe it's really more personal for me. I don't know. This one I kind of struggled with. I was like, I think it is for me. I don't know if anybody else watched this movie this way and kind of read it like this. But mine is The Prestige. I knew you were going to have that. I knew it. I knew it. I knew so, it. So Nolan, Prestige, Nolan on the list twice. Yeah. So Prestige starts as like a period psychological movie between two uh magicians like one up and that doesn't change but there's a point in the movie where we go like full science fiction right we we introduce nikola tesla we introduce like this uh duplicate process mm. that that uh hugh jackman goes through and like all of a sudden you introduce this whole new science fiction aspect into this otherwise like period movie that it, it, so I'm not talking about like the twist at the end. I'm talking about like, as soon as we introduce that part. Mm. So for me, it's, it's just my favorite. It's, it's, I love when you kind of have this, this time period and then you introduce this whole different thing that totally changes the movie and changes the rest of the movie. Uh, it, so, this is my number one. Also, I haven't talked oh, about Prestige in a respect. while, so I was like, I gotta bring up Prestige! It's, I gotta That's fill my, my Nolan quota. Yeah, contractually <laughs> obligated uh, to have Christopher <laughs> Nolan's name in every episode. For uh, good reason. For good reason. So I, I, I apologize. It's the only person to not have a Nolan film on his list. But my last one, uh, we talked about this in the last uh, top three we did. There is no worse feeling than having your number one be someone's number three. Uh, 
So this oh, time I get man. to share that with Mr. Dylan. Uh, that's okay though. From Dust Till Dawn is my is my number one. Look, I saw this in the theaters what? and I had never heard of it. I had no idea what I was getting into. I had a <laughs> bunch of buddies drag me to it, and I'm watching this movie and I'm like, all right, it's okay, it's fine, like it's fine. Uh, and I'm, I'm 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 lightly invested, and Clooney's doing his head bob, and Quentin yeah. Tarantino's a terrible actor, and oh, Julia Lewis is like a, not a great actress, and I'm just like, all right, like I'm just I'm like kind of semi into it. And then, and then we get Danny Trejo and and the and and the vampires, and it's just like, so what, what just happened? What did I just watch? <laughs> and this is amplified to me because the guy that drove us there, uh, I'll just call him uh, Mitchell for for an anonymity, anonymity. All right, so um, to protect his identity, uh, so he he's like amped. I I don't know if you've ever watched him. We we were young, um, so I don't know if you've watched a movie where someone was walking away like really amped up like just whatever they saw like was like an adrenaline drug into their system <laughs> but he's he's driving us home fast he's driving us home in the like to like weird places and he's like rat-a-tatting on the steering wheel like like he just snorted a few lines in the theater uh wow. of, of vampire juice and he's like i want to go vampire hunting and it was like okay but you know there aren't <laughs> vampires right this is this is this is important he's like just rat-a-tatting and he's driving us to like like un like unmarked like off road areas and he's like and just it was oh. like such a surreal night it is like so deeply burned in my memory because I was like am I gonna die am I'm is he gonna think I'm a vampire and I'm gonna oh my I'm goodness. in the back of a van am I am I gonna get a stake in the chest we're just driving we're driving down these abandoned roads and like and trying to find like these unbuilt areas and he's like let's get out let's go find vampires and I'm like I just kind of want to go home can I can I, can I go home because there are no vampires. I don't know who you're going to stab out there, but I do not want it to be me. Uh, it was just a weird night. So this one is like, uh, this is like, just a, what was it? it? Not only was the movie like a dramatic tone shift, but my whole night had this like really dramatic tone shift to it. Uh, so this will forever be uh, just the movie that I think of when we when talk about these hard turns. So I did make it home. Spoiler alert. I didn't make it out. Okay. Uh, no, no one was stabbed. We were fine. Um, Nice. With some howling at moons and things, but I, I can't Ow. wait to finish the recording so I can find out. Exactly. Mm. Uh, also, y young people, drive yourselves uh, to to movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Life lesson there for you. Yeah, don't carpool. It's a terrible idea. Yeah. All right, Dylan, what's All your right. number one? What is it? Oh wait, wait. <clears throat> can I can I guess it? Yeah. Do you think I'm gonna get it? I do not. Oh, it's not Psycho, then. It's Psycho, then. <laughs> Actually, you are correct, bro. It is oh. Vertigo. Oh. Now, this movie, this what movie, is... first off, it starts off with, well, I mean, it starts off in the middle of a chase, and he, he they're going over the rooftops, and he gets Vertigo, and he quits the force, and we're like, all right, basically, he's not going to be on the police anymore. He gets contacted, Jimmy, James Stewart, he gets contacted by a friend of his who's like, my wife is acting strangely. And he's like, you should call a psychiatrist or something. And he's like, no, you got to follow her because I think she's being possessed by this ghost. So the whole time you're thinking, have you guys, neither of you guys have watched this, have you? I, I, I watched it. It's been a while, but I've watched it. I have never seen it. Basically, it goes from it really tries to sell you on the fact that supernatural business is happening. Even there's even one part where people are like, hey, what even happened here? And he's like, oh, I just threw that in because I wanted it to seem a little bit surreal. It, it, it goes full on hardcore into her thinking that she is now the ghost of somebody else or a past life or this or whatever it is. And it turns out that, that instead of this, this isn't even the wife, the real, the guy's real wife. He was trying to plan a murder and use this guy so that he, because he knows he's afraid of heights, which is technically not vertigo, but he's afraid of heights and that gives him vertigo. And, or it just really kind of just messes him up. Doesn't really even, I guess it gives him vertigo, but I mean, he just gets really scared. I don't even know why it's called vertigo, maybe because of the plot. And so it turns <laughs> out that, he, he couldn't go up the staircase because he was scared and like she goes all the way up and she, like into this mission and uh, anyway so she goes up and then like she like it seems like she falls down but it turns out that's the actual wife they took her and they threw her off 
And so he's just like, I screwed up everything. I, 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 you know, I'm so sorry, all this kind of stuff. And then he finds this girl again because she's in San Francisco and she was just posing as the wife and it wasn't supernatural. And he's and he gets he figures out exactly what happened. And it turns out it was just a murder mystery instead of like a ghost story. Hmm. Really well put together. And if you haven't seen it, I recommend it very highly. I almost put Psycho, but I'm like, ah, it's just it's a horror movie. And then it turns into another horror movie. But this is you think it's a supernatural horror movie and it turns out it's just a murder mystery. We didn't even realize it the whole time, but Jimmy Stewart, you, you did. Psycho is like a, like a crime movie that then turns into a horror, right? Because she, she like ripped off her boss and was like trying to escape. Huh? Yeah, but you know, she was talking to Norman and then she was like, maybe I should go back. She get, convinces herself to go back. Even Hitchcock is like, She's getting ready to go back and face the music, hand over the money and all that kind of stuff. And then he, she gets killed and we think to ourselves, this is now a murder mystery. But then it turns out it wasn't his mother. It was him yeah. posing his mother. And it, it, that's like a couple of twists in that one. <laughs> I thought that was going to be your number one. That's I figured you would. That's why I didn't put it. I put Vertigo instead because it went off. Sneaky, sneaky. Left. I'm ready for loop. Hey, what a twist. What uh, a twist. <laughs> Yeah, I, I ended up kind of staying away from horror movies because it was once I started thinking about horror movies, there's so many that execute those like tonal shifts well. I was like, I didn't yeah. know how to. I'm a little bit surprised you're number one, Dylan. I thought it was going to be the audition. I thought about that. I thought about that. That's a really good one, too. That would have been my number four. I was going to put audition. Yes. I had actually talked about that movie before, so I thought it's not a twist and it's no April Fool's joke. But Vertigo, on the other hand, <laughs> talk about an April Fool's joke. Yeah. But a really well made movie. I, don't quite think I've seen it. I feel like it's one of those movies that like you know so much about, but I don't know if I've actually seen it. I it's funny because I, I before I watched this, I watched this later in life and I had no clue what this was about. I didn't know one thing about it. I it, look, I'm just throwing this out and we can talk about this more uh, later, but maybe maybe picking a movie like a like a Hitchcock or something, like an older film, maybe that should be one of our next uh, watch alongs. So that we can all experience maybe an older yeah. an older movie together uh, with our with our uh, with uh, with our fellow talk talk punchies. Uh, Nobody will watch. None of us have seen. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will ever click. They'll be like, "What?" We're gonna really? watch the no. Tall Man. We're all we're all getting together and watching the Tall Man, so we can all understand the references when they pop oh, up on the show. Man. Phantasm. <laughs> oh, we'll watch. Oh, that's... All right. Well, you let us know. Let us know in the comments uh, what what your what okay what what movies make you think of uh, these these hard genre turns these left turns these tone shifts uh, whatever you want to call them uh, what, what are some of your favorite movies that have that two tone appeal uh, you know maybe you've seen some of the ones that we talked about here let us know in the comments and let us know if you'd be interested in watching us and watching with us maybe a, an older film like a Hitchcock film or something like that be I think that'd be kind of fun yeah kind of into it. I'm kind of kind of digging the idea here. Um, or maybe we'll just watch more Jean-Claude Van Damme. I don't know. But either way, we look forward to seeing you next time. And I'll tell you what, it's not a joke. We love you. Ooh. No fooling. No fooling. True. We'll see you next time. All right. Brody's British. <laughs>